Hey guys, Joe here with Joe's RV Tech DIY. Um, there's some people out there that have water heaters and you're having a problem, you're not getting any propane, and then you're trying to figure out, well, which gas valve do I actually need for my water heater? Um, this video should help with that. I'll post links down below too where you guys can purchase these water heaters. I'm actually selling them on my website and I can also post some affiliate links for you guys to check out. Um, and see about getting you guys the best pricing. Um, <clears throat> and I'll put model numbers and stuff like that for what they fit so that you know it eliminates some of the confusion for when you guys are ordering. Um, this specific regulator right here is what you typically find on your Atwood style RV water heaters. So you wanna buy this with the brass fittings installed already. So because it can be very challenging to remove them and reinstall them. And what you'll find sometimes is, is people will think they need a new LP gas regulator. Um, and this little orifice right here is removable. And sometimes that's what your problem is. But what you don't want to do is stick a needle through it because it will actually change the flow of gas and it can be very dangerous. So um, that's why I say just go ahead and buy one with the brass fittings already on it. Um, this also fits the Dometic because Dometic did buy Atwood. So it is the same style regulator. Um, there's just different variations from what we're hearing. And I'll post uh, links to all the different variations that I can find for you guys uh, using some of our software that we pay to use to identify the proper parts for the proper model numbers. Um, when you are installing this, you'll want to make sure that you do not put Teflon tape on any fittings that have like this cone in that's called it's a flared fitting it attaches to the actual gas line itself and they're flared fittings they don't need um, Teflon tape when you install them another thing too that people don't know is that these pieces here are actually replaceable and a lot of the times that's all that needs to be replaced and you, you can see you just remove them with these Phillips screws now you gotta be very careful doing this, but they do also sell these parts. I sell them and many other people do too. We'll post links for them in case you just wanna replace those and not have to worry about unhooking your gas. So your propane system, because when you unhook your, your propane, as far as turning it off, I recommend turning it off and then unhooking it from the tanks themselves too, and then burning off any residual propane in the lines with the stove top until there's nothing left so that when you open it, there's not uh, the existence of propane and creating a potential dangerous environment. Um, that being said, this is the it's most Dometic models and the Atwood models, but we will post links below with model numbers so you guys can figure out which one's which. Now moving on here, this one here is what you typically find on a suburban water heater. And the, when, we, when we buy these in bulk, you can't typically buy these in like a packaged unit. There's always tape on this side and tape on this side to stop any debris getting inside. Um, the part numbers are, are here. They're kind of hard to, to read, but um, you will have to remove the fittings out of your old regulator on a suburban water heater and put them in here. So we'll go ahead and obviously you guys know that the fittings go here. You can see a little screen there to stop any debris getting inside um, <clears throat> that potentially gets into the propane lines. Very rare, but does happen. Um, some things you can do is replace the actual brass fittings. You can buy a new regulator and the brass fittings. We sell the regulators. We're working on getting the brass fittings in stock. Uh, we have some on order. It's just a variation of making sure we get the right ones. So. And you want to take a picture of the wiring to make sure that you don't hook it up wrong. So and it's pretty easy. This one's labeled one, two, three, four. I recommend just putting a piece of tape on each wire and saying one, two, three, four, or taking a photo and making sure that you hook it up to the right ones. Um, there's a lot of rumors online. Everybody's like, hey, can I adjust my gas valve? Do not adjust your gas valve on your water heater. Hire an RV technician. Um, and, my recommendation, honestly, is if you have a problem with your water heater and it's a propane issue, 
you should probably hire an RV technician to replace these because he's going to be able to do an LP manometer test, a gas drop pressure test on the system to make sure that there's no leaks when it's done. Um, this is something that the average person hasn't been trained how to do and most people will just use soapy water and spray it around these fittings and make sure they don't have any leaks. That's something you can do. Um, it's not advisable, but um, the big thing is, is when changing these propane valves, you don't know if you have any other propane leaks in your RV. And it's recommended that you get a LP manometer drop pressure test um, on your RV annually. There are other propane tests, leak detection tests that you can do besides just using a manometer, but um, it's always normally done by an RV technician. Some states actually have laws and you have to be propane certified in order to work on propane systems on RVs. And you also have to be propane certified to do a propane leak test. So the Suburban gas valves are a little more difficult to change, to be honest with you guys, in my, from my experience. And you know, I've been an RV technician here, we're going on 22 years now. I've changed, I can't even tell you how many of these I've changed and then where I'll be working on it. And um, I either can't get the brass fitting out or I'll tighten it and I can't get it lined back up. Um, and then getting the propane line on itself can be a little tricky. So it is a pretty advanced job, but if you're looking for a good price and, and you just want to have the part on you um, in case it ever does fail, or maybe you just want to supply the part for the RV technician doing the job, um, it's a good thing to have in your RV in general because these do fail and if you were out on an RV trip, say um, you went to the beach with your family and your hot water heater stopped working and you needed a propane gas valve, basically your whole trip is kind of ruined as far as having hot water all because you don't have this part. So all you realistically need to do is start finding model numbers on, the, on basically anything and everything on your RV that fails most commonly. And you can carry these parts with you in the event they ever do fail because then if you tell the technician hey i already have the part i was wondering if you could come out maybe after hours and get this changed a lot of them will come out and do the job because it'll be quick easy money because you already supplied the parts and some of them won't uh, there are rv technicians that won't do the job if the parts are already supplied it really just depends but all i can say is, is a lot of these rv techs today are motivated by money um, when you call them on the phone, if you're in a hurry and uh, you don't have a lot of time to get the job done, it seems as though um, our competitors are driven more by the amount of money they're being paid just to show up. Uh, personally, we do charge $150 an hour in my area and um, we have a two hour minimum. Some people um, appreciate it. Some people think that you know two hours is a little much for the minimum but our average job is two hours, so they get their money worth. So if I fix it in 30 minutes, sometimes I'll work an extra hour and a half on something else they need fixed. So by the time I'm all done, a lot of them appreciate it, but some of our competitors charge $175 an hour. So in that aspect, we're cheaper and they charge money just to show up. We don't charge a service call to show up in my area. So um, you will find some technicians charging you by, by the mile. But for the DIY guy that is experienced um, doing jobs like this, you know, working with propane lines and gas, it, it is dangerous. So just keep that in mind. You want to disconnect the power and disconnect the propane system. Eliminate those two dangerous elements. Make sure the hot water heater is not hot and in operation when you are working on it. So we recommend turning it off and waiting a full 24 hours before draining the water out of it if you do end up draining the water. Um, tools that you'll need, we would have to actually do a demonstration video and show you guys how to change this. And we probably will when we install the next one. These two here are just from the inventory that we have on World of RV Parts. We do stock inventory and I've actually brought these home with me today just to make this video for you guys. and. Our other video on thermal cutoffs for Dometic water heaters is extremely popular and we showed people how to test and diagnose a water heater and what the most common problem was on them currently. And to date we've sold, I wanna say 180 through our affiliate links 
of that actual part. We now sell that part ourselves on World of RV Parts and have it in stock. So if you guys are needing water heater parts on World of RV Parts, we do have these parts available. And we have a lot of other parts available as well that we do stock. Um, Till next time, safe travels. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching the video.